Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. This is a syndicated award-winning radio show and podcast, and I'm in fluid, fluid times. I'm really glad you're here. It's a time for us to gather together as community, as tribe, as one in the world. Interesting times that we're living in. And I want to say that I am moving and shifting. You're used to hearing my show on BBS radio, which doesn't exist as of a couple of days ago. You might have heard about the terrifyingly tragic California fires that just blew through. And the owners of the station didn't even have time to grab a toothbrush. They lost their entire belongings, home, stitch in their back, records, documents, memories, done, cars. They also lost their business at the same time, which was BBS Radio. So I am finding my new home, and I'm glad you're here with me because this show has been on air and has been around for 11 and a half years. It's been my greatest joy to do this show because I get a ton out of it. I love the people I get to meet and know and what they've been doing out into the world, where they're headed, what they want to create, what they've created and how they've gotten there. I also really like the sense of conversation that I have because, well, I have a really inquisitive mind. So my mind's a lot of why, hows, all those very two-year-old questions. Uh, and I, I feel really powerful about uh, what's next. So for me, there's a bit of a tragedy too, having had a home for my show for so, for so long and now widening back to find the new space and place for me. I understand that with everything that is taken away, seemingly, there is also something that is given. There's a whole new opportunity if I widen back and allow it to come to me. So I, I've gotten really good the past couple of years at receiving and uh, it really is, it has a great payoff, receiving. It's powerful, isn't it? To allow others to give, to allow others to help and care and come forward at a time we need. Frankly, to allow the universe to give at a time when I'm, I have open arms. So I'm all about abundance and I'm all about receiving. And I'm all about today's show. I'm super excited about today's show. It's going to be awesome. I finally have somebody on that I've known a few years and have just gotten to know more. I was going to say the word intensely, but I think that would totally not be the word to describe her because actually I find her to be very funny, she and her husband. So, but I've gotten to know them. We've had a lot of opportunity to gather. So I think that's great. And I can't wait to present her. She'll be on a little later. And it's international wealth coach, Morgana Ray. She's going to walk you through six time-tested steps to turn your personal money monster of scarcity into a money honey of abundance. And she'll be on later on Dare to Dream. A little bit of the conversation I want to start with is the power of attention. Often people say attention and intention. And I want to talk about the power of attention and its role in making our wishes come true because attention is really the conscious flow of awareness. And that activates the energy of attraction. So if our desire is like a seed, right, then the attention is the movement of nourishment that supports the growth of the seed into a fully mature plant. And our attention at the quiet levels of the mind provides direction and strength to our hopes, to our desires, so that they can become real. So my, my thoughts that I offer you for today is this. Deepen your intention. Deepen your intention so that it activates the memory and the energy of attraction at the most powerful level of your mind. So with continued practice around this, our attention, our intention, is able to nourish our desires from inception to fulfillment. The thought that you can come back to throughout today is, my attention activates my desires. I'm conscious of my attention. It was Susan Sontag who said, attention is vitality. It connects you with others. It makes you eager. Stay eager. So next up is Morgana Ray. She offers the magical financial alchemy for abundance and prosperity. You're going to want to stay right there. And I just want to say that this episode is brought to you by Access Consciousness. My very good friends at Access Consciousness who have supported me in the show for 
gosh, at least eight years and I love them for it and I love them for the work they do out on the planet. If there are things you need to change in your space, if you're different, and I certainly resonate with that, there's a good home for you and there's really pragmatic and powerful tools. They are at Access Consciousness. You can go to accessconsciousness.com or you can go to Dr. Dane here, D-A-I-N-H-E-E-R, drdanehere.com, and you can learn more about the power of just being you out into the world. Highly recommended both, and they are the same. Dr. Dane here, accessconsciousness.com. So I've got the money goddess here, the goddess of money, Morgana Ray. She's an award-winning 10-time international best-selling author with over 22 years as a pioneer of personal development. Morgana is widely regarded to be the world's leading relationship with money coach. She says, ask Siri, and Siri will tell you. We may have to do this on the show. She's been a guest expert on ABC, NBC, Fox News, Yahoo Finance, The Wall Street Journal, and hundreds more, Morgana's fans call her the money goddess because of the many documented stories of clients manifesting unexpected income of hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of dollars within hours of changing their relationship with money. Morgana guides idealistic entrepreneurs, coaches, authors, and artists to have a big impact in the world and to heal the rift between heart, spirit, and money. You can find out more at her website at MorganaRay.com. Morgana, welcome to Dare to Dream. It is so great to have you. It is my pleasure. I've been looking forward to this for ages. Right? <laughs> it's like it was meant to be a long time ago. Yeah. So. There was so much just in that that I want to want to address with a lot of curiosity. Um, so we started with the money goddess and the documented stories. Let's start there. So you have documented stories of clients. I'm going to go to the end of that. Even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, I left that behind years ago. We're at tens of millions now. Not within hours, but... Uh, within, uh, I, I think my record holder now, at least in speed was, um, and I have these clients in Idaho. I, I don't know what it is about the magic of Idaho, but my client Leslie made over a million dollars within a few hours of our coaching session. Okay. So tell me that story. So uh, okay. how did that happen? And then I want to know how that money came to her. If yeah. it was expected or unexpected. So, Oh, I love her. She, uh, she saw me speak at the Wellness Festival in Sun Valley, which is one of the best events I've, I've ever been to. But it, Marianne Williamson was speaking. Ariana Huffington was speaking the next year that I was there. Really inspirational place. And I had just taught my financial alchemy process uh, my first time there. And this woman comes up to me after I speak and confesses that she's in a really bad place and she's actually feeling suicidal. Mm. And I take that seriously because I know what that's like. Mm. And I said to her exactly what I would want someone to say to me when I was in that space, which is that I understand. Just stay alive long enough for it to get better because it will get better. And you know, just her entire job is just to stay alive. I didn't try to sell her anything. And she bought my Money Goddess Experience Home Study course anyway that I was offering at that event. And I bonused in a short 15-minute quick start call as, as a little sweeten the, the offer kind of thing at the event. And so two weeks later, I speak with her. And she tells me that the first time that she did the process that I'll be walking you through about transforming your relationship with money, slaying your money monster, meeting this new dynamic that I call the money honey. The first time she did it, she made $10,000 out of the blue, an investment that she had made many years ago that had never made any money suddenly boom, and she got $10,000. And then she did the process again the next day. And I believe she made I think $20,000 the next day. And then a week later, she speaks with me, and I hear some things in her family history, in her lineage, in her life, that I thought was really, really, really 
fertile ground mm -hmm. for a new money monster. And I invited her to go there. And she had had a house. If you wanted to know where the money came from. She had put her, her house up for sale over two years ago. She had gotten married, moved in with her husband, and she had this house that had been for sale for two years. Nobody had even asked to look at it for over a year. <laughs> a couple of hours after our quickie coaching session, she got a call. Somebody wanted to look at the house, and it sold that weekend for $1.2 million. Well, I hope you got a percentage of that. So. <laughs> no, no. You deserved. You deserved. That's a big breakthrough. That's pretty huge. Um, well, and, and then she went with me to my Money Goddess Retreat on Bali to dive deeper into self-love because I deeply believe from having coached so many thousands and thousands of people over the decades that all money issues are, when you dig deep enough, all money issues are love issues. That's, that's the dynamic behind the scenes. So she's the quickest. The reason I was in Sun Valley is because another woman from Sun Valley named Perry had gone on my Money Goddess Retreat in 2013 and then asked me to speak at the Wellness Festival in 2016. And I'm on stage. And I knew some of the things that happened after Bali, but I hadn't heard the whole story. And lo and behold, she had made over $12 million in those three years using the spiritual principles that I taught her in Bali. So she's, when we get into the tens of millions, that that's honestly, and you've met my husband and this is the strangest thing, but my results have just gotten bigger while I've been with him. There's something about that mojo of love that just I think adds more power to the world. Totally. I'm so glad you went there and you brought Devin into this conversation because I've seen your relationship and it's, it's really one to aspire to that kind of connection, love, fun. And he adores you. Devin's been on my show and the way he talks about you and honoring you and showing up for you in the ways you need and creating uh, some of the beautiful things that you have. We'll talk about those later. And it's really interesting because I, knowing that you were coming on and knowing this idea, the principle going from monster to honey and, you know, kind of that love relationship. So I was thinking, and um, it flitted through my mind and actually felt entirely correct that I have a very, um, I have an interesting relationship if my money were to be a man or my money were just to be money, which is like, it's in, it's big, it's like, woohoo, I can just throw it all around. I love to spend it. I love to give myself things I haven't had for so long. And there's behind that this feeling of, it's also from having grown up with very little, to tell you the truth. My mom had a lot of financial issues, so I didn't have a lot. Like I had a pair of shoes and a pair of sneakers kind of thing. I didn't have the new clothes that people had going to school. And that's a little bit still with me from some of my lean years. And because being an entrepreneur, sometimes you go from prosperity to being lean, et cetera. So I noticed that's my relationship with money. I have, I spend, and also I was like, uh-oh. And then I have to go, we need to do something here. Little triage, da, 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 da. And then I build up again. And I thought, yeah, that's been interesting. And it's not what I prefer, this yeah. huge love scarcity, huge love scarcity. And I would rather it just be this incredible continual flow and build. So what do you have to say about that kind of a relationship? Have you ever had a really dramatic boyfriend who was like all over you, generous, the greatest guy in the world, and then retreats and gets cold or you have fights? Have you ever had that kind of on again, off again love relationship? A narcissist, basically. <laughs> yes, I, yeah. I, I have been with a narcissist before. Yep. Because that sounds a little bit like your relationship with money. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're in favor, the sun comes out because I've dated that guy too. Like my, my little sister was going through social working school and gave me the whole like checklist for uh, how you recognize a sociopath. And at the time I had a boyfriend who checked all the boxes. 
so Good times <laughs> <laughs> yeah thanks for that list <laughs> yeah um so there that kind of on again off again fundamentally what i've discovered and it's interesting because i had my own transformation and then i had to kind of break it down and reverse engineer it and figure out what had happened for me so that I could do it for other people. And that's when I learned everything, not when I had my change, but when I wanted to help other people with it. And what I have found is that what I call the money monster, which we'll just call like the real behind the scenes cause of our results. And I call it money, but it's not really, it's really life. It's just money gets our attention. So we pretend it's money. So, right. But it affects everything and it's easy to measure and it's good for marketing. So we'll pretend I'm a money coach. Um, what money really is, because money is just made up. It doesn't exist in nature. It's a fabrication, a delusion that we just all agreed on to pretend that a house in Southern California, a tear down in Southern California is worth two million. Right. <laughs> um, but what it represents is really the deepest, tenderest, most vulnerable issues of what it is to be a human being. Mm. All of our issues around love, all of our issues around worth, mm. and our issues around safety. So it's Huge. interesting. By the way, can I just stop you there? Yeah. For me, safety, this is so core, so core for me. Can you talk a little bit about that? Absolutely, especially for women. Because guys tend not to stay up at night worrying about being bad ladies and on the street because they'll probably be okay. Uh, it's interesting that you brought up your mom because our parents are our first experience of money. And by the way, some of us have great parents and some of us have what I call really dramatic parents. I, I had dramatic parents. Mm -hmm. um, but parents, they are our first experience of, are we lovable? Are we worthy? And are we safe? They feed us and they house us and they clothe us and they tell us what we're worth. And then when we're adults, that's what money does. So that's our first imprint. But it doesn't end there. It's the kids that teased us at school. It's the health problems, the accidents, the mean teachers, the, the love affairs gone wrong, the betrayals, the, the bad business deals, and every little thing that we've done over a lifetime that we feel bad about, embarrassed, ashamed, just pile on the unworthiness and anything that has made us feel unsafe. I mentioned the accidents. I find that the best place to look for the root cause behind your money situation is not the money story. Hmm. That's the symptom. Like you can start there, but I've never found the money monster in the money story. Hmm. It's the stuff that came long before then. The eating disorder, oh, that's a great one. Uh, especially for women, our relationships with our body hmm. is another way that we relate to our worth, our lovability, and our right to exist. These so are big. These are really big ticket items, yeah. all of them. Is it even possible to, it's interesting, I have a question, which is, is, is it even possible to heal? And at the same time, I'm hearing Ariel Ford in my head, who said to me once, you know, spiritual people think we do all this work and we're going to heal. It's not true. We do heal. We absolutely heal. But life happens. Shit happens. Right? Oh, yeah. And then you're triggered and it comes up. You manage it. You deal with what's there and you move on. And you're just enough right now. You're already enough. It doesn't all have to be fixed, resolved, no. and healed. Nothing is fixed until you're done breathing. Mm -hmm. Like that, that, that's not the game of this lifetime is to be like, we are perfect as we are. And we came down here to do stuff, work on stuff and evolve. So it's not a failure. It's just, it's like my 
my daughter loves Super Mario Brothers. So congratulations, you just evolved to the next level. Uh, and we have our core wounds. And by the way, you know, you, you open talking about the fire, which is just, I can't even process it because I live nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, places I grew up have burnt down. Mm -hmm. People I know and love, I don't think they have their houses. So it's, it's a really, I can't even process it yet. Um, and I mentioned uh, the client who had the really quick result. I believe that, especially in the process that I teach, the person who is in the most uncertainty, fear, grief, has a huge advantage. Because what I teach is, is actually not the law of attraction, although it has some similarities in the law of attraction, people love me, but what I teach is alchemy. Mm. And alchemy is the transmutation of lead into gold, lead in human experience into spiritual and material gold. So what we have is a lot of lead happening right now. And that is the stuff that we need for the gold. It becomes the ticket to everything you wanted, but there's nothing. I'm not going to try and put a positive spin on it while you're in it, because that's not how it works. Right now, you just go through it and stay alive. And you will see the new life on the other end. I think that's actually one of the most potent ways to transmute things. I've certainly experienced that myself, that resistance to any feeling or experience just keeps it so. And the moment that I have recognized, oh, okay, that's what I'm doing. Like whether it's, I don't want to feel anger or I don't want to look at this and I'll just get busy. It doesn't work. But if I will just be still and acknowledge to myself this is so, this is really what's here right now and allow myself to be in it. It actually transmutes very quickly for me, like literally the atoms of it uh, disappear. Doesn't mean the situation disappears, but all that angst over it and stuckness. So I, it, it's interesting to hear you talk about the alchemy and, and the transformation. I wanna go into this in a little more depth in the next segment. And we're going to take a quick break. And right before we go to break, Morgana, just for some fun, because you did mention that we could ask Siri a question about you and it will come up. I don't know if your phone is close by and you can access it, but can we do this in real time? I would love to hear what Siri has to say. Well, I can try. Siri, who is the world's leading relationship with money coach? I said Manny Coates. <laughs> Manny Coates. Let me try that again. <laughs> Siri, who is the world's leading relationship with money coach? Okay, let's get that. Okay. I found this on the web. So who is the world's leading relationship with money coach? It's still giving me coats. Oh, instead of coach. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I type it in, let's, okay, let's give it one. World leading relationship with money coach. That may be beyond my ability for the moment. Uh, oh, Siri. <laughs> well, I try believe Google. It's work. It's before. <laughs> it's just. Oh, oh, the shame. Oh, the shame. You've been replaced by a coach. By a, a coach. coach. Many coats. <laughs> well, of many colors. Of many colors. Yeah, it could be Joseph. It could be worse. Well, you're listening to Dare to Dream. Thank you so much for joining us today. There is more to come. But of course, if you would like your free report on publicity, how you can become the go to expert and get booked on media now, interviews are powerful. You want to do that. Go to debbiedashinger.com and pick up your copy my gift to you of that report how to get free publicity now it's d-e-b-b-i and the last name is dashinger d is in david a-c-h-i-n-g-e-r your publicity report well i'm speaking to morgana ray dare to dream this is debbie and again you can find her at morgana ray r-a-e dot com and morgana let's see where do i want to go um 
So I just want to go over this because you alluded quickly that you had some understanding of things that I was talking about or what some of your clients talk about when this gal approached you and said, I'm not doing well and I'm thinking about taking my life. Like it's that dire. So I'm guessing the answer to this, but I'd love you to address, were you always feeling abundant and wealthy? And if not, what is, what is the arc that happened there that got you into financial abundance? Um, there are a couple of questions there. Uh, because the wanting to not exist has come up at key pivots in my life. I was hit by a car and in a coma and had a tremendous brain injury when I was 16 and mm. kind of lost everything, lost the future that I expected for myself, lost my relationship with my mother, and I was homeless sleeping on floors just to graduate from high school. Mm. And, I, and my brain couldn't do what it was supposed to do. And, I, and when I called into your show months ago about I was having some dizziness, and she, she tuned into the accident. That's why I've lost hearing in my right ear, was from that accident I've learned. So that was a, I was suicidal every day for years then. Um, we've mentioned my husband. I actually was so deeply lonely and heartbroken because I've always wanted a partner that I, I was ready to just like say, that's it, goodbye life and met my husband six months later. By the way, uh, and I, I actually had written my note, I had planned the date, and I did my process that I use on money. When I say plan my date, plan my date to just no longer be here. Uh, but I did my process that I did around money on love. Because there's this really annoying thing when you're teaching all the time <laughs> and you hear yourself teaching and you're going, oh crap, that's me again. When you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing and you aren't getting the results. That to me is my clue hmm. that we are protecting ourselves from what we want. And there are always really, really good reasons. So I uncovered my love monster. Hmm which was even bigger and scarier than my money monster had ever been. And I'll, mm. I do want to go into the steps so that um, our audience can really take home a breakthrough. And I met my husband two months later. And he was worth the wait. He was worth every dark night of the soul and every mm -hmm. tear. And then before I had my money transformation, and by the way, this is why I believe that our experiences of grief and our anger and all these like negative vibrations are treasures, are mm. valuable or they wouldn't exist. When you talk about when you surrender and let yourself experience that, there is actually a psychological dynamic called enantiodrama. Mm. That when you experience any emotion fully, mm. the opposite will naturally arise. So wow. we don't want- Interesting. We don't want half measures. We don't right. want band-aids. We want to dive in. So when I work with clients on starting with the wound, the root causes, the money monster, I want to make it as big and bad as possible because it's like a slingshot. And the farther you go in the direction of what isn't working, the more tension and energy you create to catapult mm. yourself to the other side and stay there. But there's no magic like in the middle, in neutrality. That's It's not money monster, it's not money honey, it's like money mud, and that's where you go. <laughs> it's hilarious. Okay, well, we're gonna do the steps in a minute. I definitely wanna hear those, and I wanna just ask you this. <clears throat> so I speak on stage. I'm known as a visibility and media expert. And I often do a speak to sell. And I have had the experience, I, I definitely make sales, right? And I mean that in the best way. I, come, I teach something that's very powerful, it changes lives and careers, I stand by it, I have great testimonies. I speak on stage, I give a lot of content, I do my speak to sell, and I have come down, and I think almost every time, 
There is the people there who are buying the package, who want to work with me. They're ready. There are also the people who come up to me, and it's heartbreaking, who say, I want to do your program so badly, but I literally only have the change to take the bus home. I want to do your program so badly, but I'm so far in debt. I, I don't, and they want me to tell them what to do, and I can't because I can't mess with somebody's life that is at that level, right? I can't even you know, promise them if you do what I'm doing. I mean, I can't tell you whatever path you're on that's gonna alter. You need to take care of some really important basic things. So I just want you to address that kind of engagement, like where somebody's at, where they're even at a workshop and enjoying a weekend like that, and then having that kind of terrible visceral desire and they don't have it don't have it i get that all the time by the way you know when i see athletic coaches and energy coaches and grief coaches and all these coaches decide to become money coaches overnight i just shake my head because money coaches honestly i would say probably the hardest niche because who do you attract you attract people who are in financial anxiety or really serious drama and I am not here to put anybody in jeopardy or danger or get from somebody something that they don't have or they don't have the resources to get I'm you know I'm I'm not a doctor but I still believe first do no harm so here's my approach first mm -hmm. I can't and I'm not supposed to save everybody, but I am definitely committed to helping all that I can. So I do interviews like this. And when I teach, because I had all those teachers that said, teach the what but not the how, and I'm just like, oh, screw that. You know, <laughs> I will pack in every thing I possibly can from the last 15, 16 years into the 20 minutes we have. And I'm really, you know, so I'm speaking to you, really what I'm teaching is the stuff that I learned. Because after I had my own experience, and then I had all these new clients coming in and I wanted to change their relationship with money, in the beginning I really sucked. I wasn't selling it, thank God. I wasn't selling that, I was just trying it out. And then I figure out, oh, Maybe, um, maybe the new relationship with money shouldn't be a dog because dogs don't know crap about money and you don't want to get that intimate with the dog, I hope, you know? So <laughs> that's, that's why for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, we make money a person. First the monster, then we make the money, honey, as human as possible. And a lover, a lover archetype works best and because I work with so many people who have like really horrible sexual trauma, it, we don't have to start with a lover. Hmm. You can still have results. I'm like skipping way ahead. But in response to your question, what I do is I put out as much high quality, free hmm. and cheap stuff as I can. Hmm. Because honestly, if they have results with the cheap and the free stuff, Stuff, and then they come to me and they want to be clients. Mm. Hallelujah. We like, so I, I've got my book that's on Amazon, Financial Alchemy. One of my all time favorite clients used that book, book. It's a journal, it's like part book and part self, do it yourself, self coaching system. She used it two years by herself before I even had heard of her. And when she applied to work with me, she had had her first quarter of a million dollar month in sales without my ever coaching her first. So keep doing what you're doing. Give away value, maybe give away first steps because- Oh, I do. I give well, away a lot, go. right? There you go. So love them and believe in them. That's another thing. Is and believe, say it, that part again, love them and what? Believe? And believe in them. It's so mm -hmm. easy to get sucked into people's circumstances. So easy, so seductive. That's the game of life. Circumstances are really, really convincing and dramatic and just always believe that the person you are meeting is this divine being just as brilliant 
and omnipotent and omniscient and and child of God is you. Like their soul, no limits. And look at them and believe in them. And treat them with respect. And just at the very least, you know, avoid the temptation to look at them as broken. You know, I actually am a firm believer in, um, in possibilities. It's not that I haven't been there. I remember when I first started out, ish, and I was really interested in some very high level healing experiences, and they had a big price tag attached to them. And I had that feeling too. It was very frustrating. And somebody taught me this back then, and I've used it ever since, but they said, you know, if you just get stuck in the want and I can't have, you're done, right? There's no place to go. But they said, what would happen if you just widened back and made lists? You know, do you have anything in your garage you could sell? Do you have any skills you can use? Do you have any little jobs you could do? And widen back even more. And I would do that and scribble. I'm going to tell you, I went to every single one of those workshops, whether they were two weeks or what, and I did it for 10 years in a row. So I know the power of that. And when I hear you saying this, Morgan, it's very interesting because I do believe in the power and possibility of each of these people. One of the gentlemen, this happened with very recently, I spoke mm, three weeks ago, say, this is the guy who came up and said, I have the money for the bus. And I stayed in touch with him. You know, I actually really liked him. I felt his heart and I um, stayed in touch with him. And every time he came to me with that, I said, I actually see you differently. I believe in you. And what else is possible? And he came to me finally and said, can I do a, a payment plan? And as you know, we generally have one payment or you could break them into two. But it's like, if this fellow has integrity, I'm a hell yeah. Like, I'll do also what's possible to make this happen. And he's in my program right now. He's in my program. So, um, yeah, I think it's incredible. We talk about transmutation and that, that space you were talking about is that it's also possible for the people who are in that amount of pain too to allow that for themselves. You know, you could sit with that enormous discomfort, but also know that there are other possibilities just swimming around to tap into. Yeah, yeah. I, I have the luxury of having coached a really vast amount of people and my clients have taught me what's possible because mm. I've accepted clients who I had one who's one of my favorite human beings on earth, Athena Burke. She hired me back in, I think, 2008. And she was like, um, when she described her circumstances, I was like, <gasps> I was like, I can't take her money. And I had this little voice in the back of my head that said, shut up and treat her like an adult and let her make her own decisions. So I uncomfortably allowed her to hire me because she'd already done my process and her money, honey, told her to hire me. And within five months, she was making tens of thousands of dollars working part-time and taking money moons. That's what she came up with that, like money, honey, moons down to Florida. Oh, know, I get it. Oh, that's good. That's um, really good. And because she was the right person and I just had to treat her with, I just had to like get my own nonsense out of the way. And she's one of those people who really showed me what human beings are, are capable of. And it, and it doesn't even have to be, you know, and, and I like, part of me is saying, Oh, Morgana, you should tell everybody they have to hire you. But that's not true. Like I get testimonials all the time from my free stuff. Go to MorganaRay.com. There's tons of free stuff. And there was a time many years ago when I thought, oh, if they get good stuff from the free stuff, they won't hire me. And I left that thinking long ago. To me, it's like, yay, one less person I need to worry about. And there's always enough for me to have the best clients in the world. Totally. So we don't need everybody to buy our program. And that is one of the things that drives me nuts in our industry is kind of the praying and the heavy handed sales tactics and the scare tactics to make everybody. Oh, yeah. Me too. I hate I, one of the things I, and I, I know we're not alone, but I hear it all the time. People go to workshops and like, Oh my God, it was a pitch fest one after another, after another. And you really just 
put aside your own weekend for content. So I agree. Well, when we come back, we're going to be asking Morgana, give us some steps. We're all like, <laughs> so <laughs> Hercules, yeah. Hercules. Uh, and during this break, I'm Debbie Dashinger. This is Dare to Dream. I am a media visibility strategist. Welcome to my world. I help you to create a fierce and unique presence through coaching to write your book, taking your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, and I get you scheduled on media interviews. I'm a certified coach and I help clients stop living in the shadows so they stand out and they fulfill their purpose. Welcome to Dare to Dream. We've been on for over 11 years and I love every moment of this show. And I've written three international bestsellers. I've contributed to 13 anthologies, produced two anthologies, and I myself have been interviewed on over 800 media outlets. I'm sure that number is actually much bigger by now, but I just keep growing as you all do as well. I do offer an introductory visibility strategy session just so you know, if you want to receive a personalized plan to stop being the best kept secret, it's a 45 minute call. You receive a copy of the call recording, also some paperwork with the bullet points of what you need to start doing to move yourself forward, get the exposure and where it is for you and also what's not working in your field currently. So I give you immediate strategy and empowerment to become the visible go-to expert, the go-to authority in your field that people think of first. This way, your tribe can find you. The intro is only 97, it's a $500 value. Obviously, that's a tremendous amount of content, but I do give it to people for 97, so you really can get this huge piece of information and content that will change everything you're doing right now. And the stuff you're doing well, it won't change. I will acknowledge what's going right. If you could have figured it all out by now, you would. So contact me. You can go to dare to dream radio at gmail.com. Dare to dream radio at gmail.com. Stop your business from living under a rock and rock your media influence today to become a powerhouse leader. Well, here we are back into the program with Morgana Ray, and I want to definitely offer, and we have about the short set, this is going to be a very short final segment, but if you'll take us through some of the steps, that would be great. So we can get some relief with our money. And as you were saying, our life, our life, our love, our money. Cause I'm speeding through this. I just want to say you can go through, I have resources at MorganaRay.com to go through it more deeply and, and slowly free and inexpensive. So, and I also just want to say, yeah, I love you so much, Debbie. You are just so generous and wise. And I know your audience gets what a special gem you are. So thank you for having me here. Right back at you, girlfriend. Thank you. So the first step, this is a process that I call alchemy, financial alchemy, because it's the transmutation of the lead of what's not working. So the first step is to focus exclusively on the ick. It's like, take off your law of attraction hat. You get to have it back. <laughs> I want to separate mm. what, what's, what we want to keep from what we want to get rid of. So we want to courageously go into like anything in your life that has energy around it, that has ever made you feel not lovable, not worthy or unsafe. And by the way, even if you heal that this is the great news, you get to use it again. If it has any charge, like if you survived that crap, it would be such a waste to not milk it for the rest of your life <laughs> you can get something out of it. So good. So the, the accidents, the, the you know, broken relationships, whatever your parents didn't do right, we want to milk wherever you can find some pain you can use stuff that's going on in the world that has nothing to do with you okay there's plenty of stuff there too whatever makes you feel unloved unworthy or unsafe and you want to just like like a lawyer just build up enough of a critical mass of ick of pain and by the way extra points if you're crying not necessary but extra points then we do something crazy weird 
and we imagine that it's all the fault of this third party person. This, what I call the money monster, is like this superhuman bad person who has existed to torture you until life isn't worth living. And does that through every setback, every challenge, every hurt you've ever had. We make it outside of you because in step three, we're gonna destroy it and we're not gonna destroy you. Hmm. We're also not gonna destroy your parents. And I know some of us have had really monstrous parents, but they gave us life, so we're not gonna kill them because we're not the kind of people who kill parents. I trust. So, but the monster may have used your parents and your parents probably have their own monster of scarcity mm -hmm. and fear and unworthiness and all that kind of stuff. So, and if, if you have kids, just imagine what will happen if you pass your monster onto your kids. So you aren't getting rid of it just for you, you are getting rid of it for those you love. So step number two is you personify the monster. Step number three, you get rid of it by any means necessary. This imaginary, yes. I want to ask you a question. So I'm not visual, right? So when people go into visualizations, I'm lost. It just doesn't mm -hmm. happen for me. But I'm very uh, feeling based, uh, visceral, I think yeah. somewhat auditory. So for people like me, when, when, you know, so I have the energy of what you're talking about, but Good. I don't know that I could personify visually what I'm, the monster is. Is that necessary? And if actually, is, well, I would actually say the majority of people are not visual. You know, it's, I think it's a split between people who are visual, kinesthetic, which is feeling, and auditory. So maybe two thirds of people don't start visually. What I do when I'm coaching, so this is a great question because you're talking for the majority, mm. myself included. Mm. I start with the feeling, how big is it? Start with the feeling of the pain of all the stuff you just kind of dug up to look at mm -hmm. until it's like, this is not acceptable in my life. And then how big is it? How big is this person? Is this person hot or cold? Hmm. What does it smell like? Because oh. smell is our least intellectual, it's our most animal, emotional feeling that we have. The emotions matter so much more. The problem with visualization we will get there, but it's so literal that we can start spinning in our conscious mind, getting all controlling. So I like to save it for last. So what does it smell like? What does it think to itself when it looks at you? Ooh. Right. What is the meanest thing you've ever said to yourself? Put it in the monster's mouth. It wasn't even coming from you. It was coming from mm. him because he wants you to want to die. And what it comes to is you want a person that feels real so not cartoonish that's a way to kind of create an emotional distance we want to create a really strong emotional media immediacy and only one of you gets to survive so awesome. you decide who gets to live and there is a correct answer okay <laughs> <laughs> and then you destroy the monster by any imaginary means necessary and you can vocalize it you can physicalize it or not mm. but here here are some common tools of money monster destruction knives uh lightsabers flamethrowers fiery pit <laughs> Um, those big double-handed swords, uh, one client who I actually heard from this morning drove over her monster with a monster truck. I love that. Atom bomb. <laughs> whatever, whatever. By the way, you know, we're all into love and light and so many of us are vegan and, but there's actually a real sacred value to that kind of rage. It's like the mm -hmm. God of Kali or Lord Shiva, you know, destroy what doesn't belong in your life. You get to mm -hmm. cut it off. And, but, and that tradition exists in every religion. And 
So we don't want to get rid of our anger. We want to use it. Anger is like the fire that helps us rise up from this like wow. damp, that damp cold of our victim experience. Mm -hmm. And by the way, our, our victim experience has gold in it. So we really want to extract what is useful from it. It's what gives us the humility and the sensitivity to care about other people. So it's, it humanizes us. So the first three steps uncover the root cause, which is never really about money, but you can start there. Personify it into a money monster. Three, get rid of the money monster by any means necessary. And that's the first half. Mm. And then, then we get to the fun part. Yes, there is a fun part. <laughs> When the monster is gone, and it's real, and it's totally binary. Like if there's any left, do not proceed. Mm. Just get rid of what's left. Okay. And I've I've gone through up to ten iterations with a single client because some people have stickier monsters than others. That's okay. My job is to outlast any monster. Mm. So just know. Oh, if you're aware, there's a little bit there. Make a make another little monster. Whatever you need to do. When it's gone, it's gone. Okay. And it will feel different. And it may feel frightening. That's fine. It may feel wonderful. That's fine. It may feel light. I've had clients on the other side of the planet say, like, the sun came out. And I was like, that's right. <laughs> it, you know, it's just different. Different is all I'm listening for. When there's this empty space, we don't want another monster to fill that the monster you destroyed is gone Anita. but we have an empty space and we have a need to have a healthy happy relationship with money love and life so when the monster is gone then you get to meet what's left and what's left all that's left is love mm. And that will show up as a person too, because that makes it real. We, you know, ideas are fabulous, but abstract ideas don't create real world results like this. Not as easily. We know what it's like to know people. So we make this a person. Mm. And what does work best is if you like the boys, I invite you to have a really attractive guy. If you like girls, have a really attractive girl. If you like both, see who shows up. And this is just somebody who loves you. And if you've had sexual romantic trauma, congratulations. This is an opportunity to completely redesign your blueprint for relationship for the rest of your life. This is a person who will always respect your boundaries and exist just to love you. And it becomes your partner. And the reason I like lovers is because lovers are equal and you can break this person's heart. So you have the power because you have the body. So step number four is you meet what I call your money honey. And I call it money because money is an area of life, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. That is an area of a lot that needs our love and our healing. So let's pretend it's money. But also know that it's, so much more and this person doesn't feel like money this person feels like oh my god he's still my heart i'm in love and this person mm. loves more than anybody in the world that's step number four step number five is now you get to have a conversation so when i met my money honey back in the day the first time the first question i asked was what do you need from me so you can stay with me which is a very different question than what do you need from me so you can love me? Totally different. Your money, honey, loves you, wants to stay with you, but you have the power to push this person away. And you've been exerting that power for a long time, so we know you can. Question, because I'm taking notes, copious notes. So I have a conversation with the money, honey, and I, I ask, what do you need from me so, what was the rest of you that? Can Stay with me the way you so deeply desire to is the subtext. This is someone who loves you, but you are the doorkeeper. Your money, your money, honey, never actually leaves. This is the big secret every client discovers, but you may unconsciously push him away or her. 
I will default to him because mine is. Uh, when we get complacent, when we choose a stranger over our relationship, somebody who doesn't want to pay us what we're worth, when we want to cheat on our money, honey, mm. you know, I, I, and I learned this very painfully years and many, many years ago when I had a bunch of clients who said, I can't pay you, but I'll pay you when such and such happened. And then I coached them and such and such happened and they didn't pay me and I didn't ask mm. for the money because I still had stuff to learn. And at the end of the year, my money, honey, was like split bill. Like yeah. clients were going away, money was going away. And I was like, wait, I don't understand. You're a cute guy. You're supposed to stay now. I thought that was it. And he actually, he pointed out to me all the times that I had told him he didn't matter. Mm. And how that, how deeply that hurt him. Mm. And he believed me that I didn't want him around. And I apologized not out of being shamed. I wasn't shamed by him, but out of like, wow, I've been a real jerk. Like, I see how much I've hurt you. How do I make amends? And he said, I, I need you to go to those people who owe you money and tell them you need to be paid, which wow. at that time, I couldn't imagine anything more horrifying. And I did it. And I got paid part of what I was owed by only one of them. But my income quadrupled from unexpected sources that month just by taking the action. And that was a lesson that is like in my cells now. So it's a dynamic relationship. So the first question that I usually start the relationship with is what do you need from me so you can stay with me? Because it's all about giving you, human, the power, not giving your power away to some imaginary fairy because when you do that, it becomes a monster. Hmm. The point of life is your power. Right. So that's step number five is the conversation. Okay. And then step number six is concrete physical action. Action is magical. If you want real world physical results, we want to get this out of your head and into your body. And those results, so you ask your, your money, honey, or you have a conversation. Like don't put your money, honey, under the interrogation lights because that will silence your intuition like that. But instead, just like brainstorm, what, what action can I take right now to show myself and my money, honey, that this relationship has changed? And my favorite stuff, like sometimes it'll be something like balance my checkbook, do my taxes, and the client will come back and say, oh my God, I did my taxes, and it was like foreplay. But a lot of times it doesn't look like it has anything to do with money or it doesn't make sense. I have a client whose money, honey, told her to stay home for the weekend and she picked up a $20,000 client. Uh, I've had clients go out and get pedicures. Uh, a client in Canada, Janet Breitmeyer, her money, honey, kept telling her to take a walk. And she kept saying, okay, but not doing it for two weeks and nothing was changing and she was getting more and more stressed. And then she finally took the walk because she was too busy. She had to make money. She couldn't take a walk. She took the walk and picked up two clients on that walk for more than she'd ever charged before. So it doesn't have to make sense. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's like movement. Just do it and do it without expectation. Don't make this a transactional relationship where you have to see results because you wouldn't want to be in a transactional relationship yeah. like that. That is fear-based, not love-based. And it's counterintuitive, but the more the relationship is about love and not about cash, the more cash shows up. And is that, is, uh, is that all the steps? So then we are taking the action that's that was the recommended? Six steps. Yeah, uh -huh. that's the, when you're done with that, then we can go on a money goddess journey. But let's start with these six. Steps. These are amazing, are really amazing. And I'm going to do it. And I loved this. Um, it was actually in the conversation you were having somewhere between the what do you need from me so I can st so you can stay with me the way you so deeply desire to that step and between the action and you made a reference to the importance. Oh. 
it was the story about your clients who had not paid you. And the recommendation was you need to go ask for that money and to start uh, switching this around. And it, it reminded me, I am, I went through a huge <laughs> heartbreak is, is a very mild word of a long-term relationship last year had a lot of impact on me. And I definitely, I mean, the healing I've done in a year and a half has been extraordinary. I'm super grateful. I am now working with uh, two healing coaches, one inside for love and one a dating coach. So I'm super loving this experience of allowing someone just to guide me, right? And one of the things my love coach recommended was I was going on a second date with somebody who's definitely really likes me and is pursuing me. And she said, on this date, I want you to have the casual dating talk. I'm like, what is that? So she literally sent me a little script and said, you know, you basically say to this person, I just want you to know I am casually dating right now. I am just enjoying this process and I love spending time with you and I find it extraordinary and I'm so glad we're met, we've met each other and are continuing to do so. And yeah, that's my reality right now, just so you know that I am casually dating. So, the, you know, the interesting thing is I'm, a, I'm letting him know, and that is true, I am going to absolutely date. And at the same time, apparently there's a pursual that happens that gets, there's a few dynamics that occur with that actually very honest communication. So I like it in theory, and I went on the second date, and I couldn't do it. I was just like, I feel like such an idiot saying this to this person. And wow. so much, came, well, I was thinking, oh my God, you know, I, I definitely can tell he really likes me, and I don't want him to feel put off, or like I'm saying something that makes him feel awkward. Or da -da. I don't know, but it got just all jammed in my head. So my coach was super compassionate. She said, it's all right. You're not the only one this happens to. It happens a lot. So I'm going to see him Saturday. And she said, you know, find a time. But she said, but after you say it, change the subject. This is not going to be one of those conversations. You're just putting out some information, moving on. If he needs clarity, you know, she, and she gave me some very clear instances on a few things that would make sense. Somebody might ask, but to respond to them, give the clarity and move on. So I love what you said when you were saying how you didn't pursue the right path for yourself and that your money, honey, told you, no, take care of that. You know, you deserve that money. You gave them value. Go get what your agreement was, what the deal was. And I love that because actually this has nothing to do with the men. This is the deal with me. This is me stepping into my own life. I feel the power of this so big right now. Whoa. It is the deal of me stepping into my own life and really changing the trajectory, like what I am so committed to right now, the love for myself, the care for myself, that I'm completely changing the dynamics going forward. So whether it's comfortable or not is actually not the issue. It really is about taking a stand for me energetically. So I'm really grateful we had this conversation because I feel like going forward, Saturday, I'm doing it. I'm committing right now to you and everybody else. I'm doing it for me. Well, and I would say the discomfort could be the whole point in itself because you'll discover you survive it and it <laughs> make you stronger and more comfortable. Um, for years, I would cry to my money, honey, where is my man? And my money honey would say, he's coming and hold out for somebody who loves you as much as I do. Mm. And I picked the person who is the closest human incarnation, my human honey. And they say the same crap <laughs> by meaning they want what's right for me. And my money honey may be saying stuff to me. And then my, and then Devin will say it. And it's like they gang up on me for my own good because they both love me and they're both looking out for me. Oh my God. Bing, 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 bing. So people quick, little quick break here. We're going to come back. We're going to do a lightning end round with Morgana and find out a little bit more because I know you can feel into how powerful that would be if you could find that. 
And imagine if you could find all of these to have abundance in all these areas, how incredibly potent and wonderful and free that could be. So you are listening to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. You can go to my website, debbiedashinger.com. It's D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And you can get your free publicity report there. Also, if you are enjoying this show, leave a five-star review. What's great about the five stars and the reviews is other people who are looking for quality transformational conversation like this can find it based on what you share. And thank you so much, by the way, for the 11 and a half thus far run that we've had together. I adore you and the fact that we've stuck together through this growing journey together all this time. So here we are, final segment, lightning round with Morgana Ray. You can find her at MorganaRay.com. And Morgana, what is one ritual or practice that you use daily that keeps you grounded? Uh, every morning when I wake up, I set my priority for the day and I make a list of preemptive gratitude. It is so easy to get into fear. So I consciously give gratitude for the things that I want to come to pass. And it's like magic. Things that were stuck, things that seemed impossible, it, it almost lubricates. It helps you rehearse for the results that you want to see in the world. So That's sexy. I like it. Yeah. Lubricates. Okay. <laughs> Lubricating <laughs> gratitudes. I'm in. Yeah. Preemptive <laughs> gratitude before it happens. Wonderful. Fantastic. Talk about attention and intention going out in the world. So this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream, Morgana? What are your future dreams and goals? Well, it's funny because uh, because of you, I want to do a radio show with my husband, Crazy Sexy Midlife Love. I came up with the title. And so I uh, need to find a home for that, speaking of which I see my husband coming up. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's the next piece. And I think I'm going to write my next book, The Rich Witch Challenge, Practical mm. Magic for Wealthy Living. I love that title. The Rich Witch? Witch Woman in Total Command of Her Powers. Damn. Okay. Let us know when that's coming out. That might be another segment. That sounds well, really I have good. To write it first. Yeah, it's okay. It's done. That would be a nice lubricating gratitude right there, preemptive. Um, so you've alluded to Devin. I know you guys. You do something very extraordinary. I want the listeners to understand about you getting married as many times as you have in as many places. Can you share a little quickly about the fact that you have said making more money means putting love first and you walk your talk. How does that yeah. manifest in your marriage? Well, I think that really the only good purpose for money is to serve love, lifestyle, and legacy. And the world is, has a lot of people who are making tons of money and it's not serving that. And that's poverty. Like nothing is ever enough for these oligarchs who are destroying the planet. That is poverty. That's not happiness. So money always serves love, lifestyle, and legacy. And I've designed a business that, it's funny, in 2012, and I knew I wanted to travel the world with the love of my life. I hadn't met him. I changed my whole business. I had to have very few one-on-one -on -one clients I, be, for the time freedom. I switched all of my products except, except my book that's on Amazon. I switched everything digital. I cleared up my schedule. And then I met a man who's a world traveler who about... 18 months into our relationship, I was leading my money goddess retreat in Bali. You want to talk about what I'm looking forward to? My 2019 money goddess retreat in Bali, I'm really excited about. Um, lots of stuff from Bali. So he proposed to me over Skype and <laughs> we, we eloped. Uh, and then about a week later, we were in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, because he's a travel writer, and he got a gig, and he got them to let me come to, and we called it our honeymoon. And we were walking past the iconic cathedral in Puerto Vallarta, and he said on a lark, hey, you want to get married again? And I said, absolutely. 
And the second time was deeper. Mm -hmm. It meant more. I had had almost 13 days of marriage under my belt, more than I did the first time. So I felt like I knew a little bit more about what it was like to be married. I started crying. We're in this mm -hmm. cathedral. People start cheering. And Devin saw how how happy it made me. And he came up with the idea, let's get married a hundred times in a hundred countries, which was like a no brainer. Yes. For me. And so, so been, romantic. Oh my God. Oh, my bucket list was just to get <laughs> married once, you know, happily married once I was 45. When we met, I was 47. When we, when he proposed, at which point I was like, I don't want to deal with banquet rooms and caterers and DJs. I am, if I were, you know, 20 and mommy and daddy were doing it great. I spent $20 on my white lace dress at Ross. Ah, that's great. Um, and got compliments like all oh. over Europe. So that's what a horrible bride I am. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we got married in castles and Devin was knighted in, in the Republic of San Marino. And, and it was, like I got my fairy tale fantasy wedding to fight myself. And I also learned that the only thing that matters is the couple and the vows and the marriage is the prize, not the party, not the castle, not the dress, not the guest list. The whole like going home with him, that's the prize. And it's also really nice to experience love in different cultures and to cut out time in life. It's inconvenient, especially when you're the girl and you have to put on a white dress and put on makeup and all that. But to say, you are my priority. Mm -hmm. You, and this is, this is why I love you. And this is what I want for you. And we just make up new vows every time and it gets better every time. Ooh. Feel it. I hope I'm there at one of them. That's all I can say. I don't know what country that'll be in, but maybe it'll be, I know, I know you guys are actually going to be in Mexico next year. And maybe it'll be there. I would love to see one of these. I want to be a flower girl or something at one of these. So I would love that. Wedding. I'll do it. I'll do anything. I don't you wrap. Marry us. Oh. Done, done in God's eyes. That's okay. You heard it here, people. You heard it here. So now you got to come to the wedding too and celebrate. This is so beautiful. If you want to know more about Morgana, go to her website, morganaray.com. Thank you so much, my friend, for sharing your brilliance today on Dare to Dream. This has been extraordinary. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. I end today's show with this quote from Miguel de Cervantes. Never stand begging for what you have the power to earn. Next week on Dare to Dream, I am featuring Sean Stone. Sean is the son of the filmmaker Oliver Stone. Sean is an American actor, film director, producer, cinematographer, and he's a screenwriter. And Sean hosts the TV show Watching the Hawks. He has several provocative movies about to come out and release, and you want to tune in to hear this. It's going to be, this guy is really interesting. So, I'm excited actually to engage with him. If you would like to enjoy inspirational videos, please do so. Go to youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. And again, debbie-inger.com to get your free publicity report. Share this show with your friends and those you love. And remember, I love hearing from you. You matter. The secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Thank you so much for joining me today on Dare to Dream.